Thank you all for joining us tonight. We're gonna wait just a few moments for others to join us and then we will get started. Welcome to Family Houston's weekly Facebook Live series. So we're here every Thursday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. You can find out more about Family Houston and some of the topics that we've been covering, as well as watch our past live streams here on our Facebook page. And we hope you'll be joining us for each week as we talk about new um, and relevant topics for you guys. Tonight, we'll be discussing all things financial, which is obviously right now very important and a really relevant topic. So we'll be talking about ways that you can save during this time, how to make your money last longer, the importance of a good credit score, and how to create a budget, which we can all use. Um, so I'm Shelley Long, the Manager of Communications at Family Houston. And again, I'll be the moderator for tonight's session. I hope you've been tuning in over the last month and know a little bit about Family Houston by now. But just in case you don't, I just want to let you guys know um, the services we offer the community. So we provide mental health counseling, financial and employment coaching, and case management services to individuals, children, and families. Um, with this being an extremely difficult time, if you or someone you know that could benefit from our services, you can message us privately here on Facebook, or you can email us um, and visit our website or call us. I'm gonna go ahead and drop our contact information in the comment section so that you guys have it if you need it. With that being said, I'm sure many individuals, myself included, are anxious about finances during this time and have lots of questions. So um, if you want Brenda or Armando, who are gonna be the financial coaches joining me tonight to answer anything, you can go ahead and message us or you can comment on here and at the end of the session, we'll have them answer for you. With that being said, I'm going to dive right in and start with a general question so you guys have maybe a better understanding of what uh, Family Houston's financial coaches do. So Armando, could you explain to us what financial coaching is and maybe some misconceptions that people have with it? Sure. Uh, the best analogy that I could give is what a coach is in terms of athletics. Uh, believe it or not, when Harvard started their football program for the first 10 years, they did not hire a football coach. And during this 10 year period, the rival was Yale. Uh, in a 10 year period, they were only able to win three times against Yale. So in the 11th year, guess what Harvard did? They hired a coach and they increased wins against Yale. So just as in the world of sports, it's unthinkable to have a coach and even the best players have a coach, the same thing applies to our finances. So to clarify some of these misconceptions, a financial coach and a financial advisor are two different things. Uh, a financial coach is what is a person who's going to help you is going to help you to discover where you are financially, and they're going to provide educational resources so that you can make an informed decision. Uh, they support you on your journey uh, to make your uh, desire or your goal a reality. Um, a financial advisor, on the other hand, is a person who's uh, looking for clientele that has money to invest. Uh, they have a license uh, with FINRA, and uh, they sell financial products. Uh, uh, they will not sit down with you and make a budget, or they won't sit with you and see how you can improve your credit, uh, and not to diminish the the, the role of a financial advisor, what they do absolutely brings value. Uh, but a financial coach can help you uh, cover a, a larger area when it comes just to your basic finances. So it, they help you uh, measure your income, uh, your expenses, your debt, and you can live within the, within the context. Uh, for example, uh, there's a great tool I'd like to share with you tonight, the Living Wage Calculator. Uh, and basically, with Living Wage Calculator, you can put uh, where you live 
or, or where you want to live and see what is the minimum amount of money that you need to make to survive. So for example, in, in Houston, a single person uh, is $12 an hour they need to make. Uh, but if it's an adult and three children, they need to make at least $34.16 to survive. If you were to compare that to San Francisco, uh, San Francisco, one adult and three children, you need to make a minimum of $55.22 to survive. Uh, so it really helps. So that's that's what a financial coach does and it helps you to do. I think those are really great points, Armando. And I want to note that anyone can work with a financial coach at Family Houston at no cost. So all of our financial coaching services are free to everyone. So there's no excuse not to make an appointment after this Facebook Live. Um, Brenda, um, I want to thank you again, too, for joining us tonight. And now that Armando has explained what a financial coach is and some of those misconceptions that people sometimes have, um, do you think you could talk about uh, some ways a financial coach like yourself can actually help someone and make a difference? Yes, definitely. So a financial coach really makes an impact, a life impact. And the way it does it is by helping people gain money management skills that can really last a, lot, um, last a lifetime and also all the skills that you will learn will be passed down to your children and your grandchildren. You're really making that generational impact. And um, I work with individuals that come from different backgrounds and different income brackets. And they're all facing the same challenges. Um, and you know, we work with people that have no income, zero income to six figures. And it's really just getting to teach, sitting down with them, teaching them how to manage their money so they can reach their financial goals. So we have different uh, approaches that we take, um, which is um, helping a client personalize their budget. And typically when a client comes in, I discuss with them how we work together to accomplish their financial goals and ask them what they're doing so far. And that's what we start talking and then we, we do some research together, right? What has worked and what hasn't. We go over the budget and we see what money has is left over so we can um, work together to meet those goals. And if this goals can be starting an emergency account, um, paying down debt or increasing savings, um, et cetera. And um, also as a financial coach, we can help client identify money habits and relationship with the money. And um, it really helps bring awareness with spending habits. So we're um, sitting down looking at that budget. And also um, we're able to accomplish this when we do tracking, which is we can do this daily, weekly, and monthly to really uncover where, where's the money going? You know, people like, they just don't, they're, they're not seeing their money. And when we really sit down together, we figure out where, it's, where is it going? And also as a financial coach, we provide that accountability um, we definitely cheer our clients whenever they're reaching their goals. We also follow up with them, remind them of their goals and track, help them track their goals and see where they're at and what improvements they've made. Um, one good example that I can give you of a client story that um, I was able to help four months ago, a client came, um, his, um, the client was really stressed. They had a lot of debt and, um, through the first session, we were able to uncover that it wasn't really um, the fact that there was not enough income. The income was there um, because this person had two jobs. And um, it was really um, a money management problem and also a money habit problem. And um, what would happen, what this person was doing is really getting um, into more debt because they were using debt to pay off debt. And so, we worked together and we came up with a debt reduction strategy. So we were able to use a uh, part of the income from the second job in order to pay down the debt. But then COVID-19 happened and then the person lost their job. So we got back together, we restructured the plan and the budget. And um, with the skills that my client had gained, my client was actually able to talk to their credit card company and other creditors and really negotiate those interest rates. And um, now this person is also 
able to um, make the minimum payments and be okay during COVID-19 and still meet their ends and still work with their goals. That's huge. I mean, during this time, especially, it's just so tough on everyone. And so I'm, it's really great that you guys are able to help people um, not just, you know, meet these, uh, like their basic needs and getting by, but actually kind of helping them move forward a little bit. So thanks, Brenda. And one of the other things that I think is really neat about financial coaching with Family Houston is that our financial coaches work with each person to create a personalized budget, financial plan, and come up with tangible steps to reach those goals, like uh, Brenda was just talking about. So wherever that person might be on that financial journey, maybe it's just someone who's trying to pay off debt, like which Brenda just mentioned with that previous client, or maybe it's someone who is in a position to buy a house, but doesn't know how to. So we really do meet everyone uh, where they are on that journey. So one really important thing that people will need to work on to meet some of these goals, especially if you're trying to buy a house, is uh, your credit. So Armando, can you tell us what the importance of having good credit is and maybe some places someone can find their score? Sure. Um, one of the apps that are, that are my favorite that I like to use, especially monitoring your credit, is Credit Karma. Uh, it's a vetted app. It's in, uh, And basically, it, it gives you information. It gives you alerts and even gives you suggestions on how to uh, improve your credit. Now, your the impact of credit history uh, is very significant. Um, for example, one thing that credit can Im impact and uh, the majority of consumers are not aware is employment. Um, so for example, let's say you're uh, trying to get a promotion, you wanna be in, in a position of leadership, um, or especially in the financial industry, if you wanna work in the financial industry, uh, one thing that they do is they pull your credit. Um, and as, as unfair as this may sound, uh, if you have bad credit, you could be viewed by your potential employer as someone who is not responsible. Uh, given that, if they have another candidate who has good credit, uh, basically the other the other candidate will be selected. That that can be like a tiebreaker. Uh, the other thing that credit also impacts is your insurance rates. Uh, someone with bad credit can end up paying more on car insurance than somebody with a DWI. So not only does it hurt your income, but it also makes uh, insurance a lot more expensive. Uh, also housing, uh, if you have bad credit, it can make it very difficult uh, for you to buy a home or almost impossible. Uh, and also when it comes to rent, uh, they might ask for a first and last month deposit. Um, the other thing that, the other way that credit also impacts is obviously when you wanna get a loan, uh, Somebody with no credit and can't get a loan from a banking institution, if you were to go to a pawn shop and you were to get a loan, let's say from a penny to $200, the max that the state of Texas is, has authorized a pawn shop to charge you is 236%, which is unbelievably high. Uh, if you go and get a payday loan, um, and basically uh, to qualify for a payday loan, you, you need a bank account, and you need a direct deposit. Uh, the interest rate can range from 300% to about 936%. So uh, the credit, the impact of credit history is, is very significant. Um, it also will impact your, your access to loans, to credit, uh, and even other important services such as a cell phone. Uh, some people uh, aren't unable to get a cell phone because they have bad credit. So Definitely credit is an area where a financial coach can help you and guide you how to increase that score and how to keep that score at a high level so you don't end up hurting yourself financially. I am just in shock at the percentage that some of those can go up to, Armando. That is unreal. Yes, it is. Oh, my gosh. Well, um, OK, I'm going to get over that. Uh, what are some ways people can manage their finances, Armando, during... Oh, I'm sorry, Armando. I was going to actually ask you a follow-up question first. Um, if someone who is working on their credit score has a low score, um, what are a couple of things that you recommend they could do to start building that up? So so it's, it's definitely a case-by-case -case, uh, situation. So I guess the, the best way I like to describe it is it's kind of like 
if you're taking a class and you know the first thing that they give you on day one is that syllabus and based on that syllabus it tells you how your grades are going to be calculated for that class so uh, there's different categories so for example uh, one of the categories that will impact your credit score is your credit utilization ratio As, so let me explain what that jargon means. what does that mean so so for example let's say you have a credit card and you have and your credit cards for a thousand dollars rule of thumb is don't go over 30 percent of that credit card so basically don't look at that credit card as as a thousand dollars but you're going to look at that credit card as max three hundred dollars um if you don't if once you start going over that 30 percent uh, your credit score starts going down. Um, so that's that's one of the things. Another thing that, that creditors also look is your payment history. That's a, I think that's like about 35% of your score is calculated by that. If you pay late, so if you pay 30 days late, 60 days late, ni or 90 days late, all that is being counted against you. Uh, the unfortunate thing about credit, um, when you make a mistake like that, it can impact you for seven years. So um, in this segment, we wouldn't be able to talk about all those things, but definitely I would encourage anyone who wants to increase their credit score, wants to protect their credit score, to reach out to a financial coach, and we'd love to help you with that. That's, uh, that's really important information, Armando. Um, I actually had a question from the audience that I'm going to jump in and ask you real quick. What is the highest a credit score can be? Um, I believe, I think it's, it's about 800. 800 or 815, that's probably like the, the max. Okay, awesome, thank you. So, Brenda, what are some ways people can manage their finances during COVID-19? I, I know things are tight and difficult right now, but I think there are probably still some things that people can do. And maybe you can also share with us some ways that we could all cut costs. <laughs> yes, definitely. So right now, um, it's definitely a time to reevaluate your budget and depending on what your financial situation is, right? And the more impacted you might be, you really want to put your budget and really cut expenses to bare bones. So one way we could do this is by creating an Excel budget spreadsheet. And that allows you to really just go line by line and see where you can make these changes that would lead to reduction in expenses. Um, and some examples that um, of this can be change your phone plan change internet or change um, phone providers, revisit your insurance plan. I know some insurance companies are giving people 15%, 20% discount, so they're getting money back. So when you're getting that money back, you can reapply that to um, your financial goal, whether that be um, creating a savings account or emergency savings, whatever that is, or just covering another bill where you might be shortened. Um, so another thing you can also do is requote your insurance and see if you still need that coverage that you um, had when you originally got the policy. There might be things there that you're getting, that you're paying for that you really don't need. So reevaluate that. One thing I recommend is to work with the independent insurance agent because they can work with multiple insurance carrier and provide you the best quote. Um, and I know some people might be saying, well, I really don't like Excel. Well, you can use a composition notebook um, and you can create um, your personal Excel sheet. I call it the composition Excel and the lines are already there for you and you just um, write down all your expenses and your income and you start making those changes when you're going line by line again and you can create that using the composition book. Um, another thing that you can do is learn about possible hardship programs that are out there, um, they're being offered by your creditors or your financial institution. And um, I know one is very popular in the student loan um, forbearance program. And this is currently covered under the CARES Act. The only thing that it's only, um, it's only the loans that are um, federally funded, local loans and state loans are not included and private loans were not included under the CARES Act. Um, but you could still call your provider, your private loan provider, or your local um, provider for your student loans, and make they might have options for you. You just have to ask them. Ask what um, COVID-19 relief options do you have in order to really make it through the hardship. 
And also, if you've already paid your April student loan payment and your May payment, and right now you you need that money, you can you can call back. You can call them and get that money back. Um, you might have to wait a long time because um, there are probably a lot of people calling. Just be patient, and you can get that money back just by making a quick call. Um, other things that you might be able to do um, is your mortgage. You might be able to um, get mortgage forbearance. Um, just be aware that if you do this, your payment uh, might be due in full once the term is over with. Or you, um, you might also have payment plans that you can arrange with your creditor. It all depends um, what you're willing to, um, they're willing to do, but it just really takes a lot of negotiation as, as well. So be persistent, calm, and um, let them know what um, situation you're right now facing. And um, they most likely will be willing to work with you. Um, there's also um, deferment option. Deferment can be anywhere from one to three months. And usually what deferment does is that they'll add this, um, the payments that you've missed for that one to three months period and add it to the end of the loan. So let's say you had 15 years left and you'll have 15 years and three more months left of your loan. So just reach out to your creditors and credit card companies. Some of them are doing forbearance um, or they're, maybe they're just um, letting you do interest payment only. Um, there's just different options out there and you won't know unless you reach out to them and then contact them. I know I've heard some clients have been trying to reach their credit card companies and they've had to wait a long time. I know it can be frustrating, but just be patient so you can talk to somebody and be able to make those payment arrangements that you, that you need. Um, some ways that you can also find ways to cut costs are you can take advantage of streaming services that are free, free trials. Um, usually some of them are like two weeks, one week, one month. Take them up. You know, you save money that way. Um, there are other um, free alternative options to stream as well. So you just have to really look those up to find those options that will best fit you and your family's needs when it comes to streaming services. Also, um, you can cut your utility bill by controlling your usage. Also, I would recommend going to powertochoose.org and based on your address, you can find the best plan that fits your needs. Also, make sure you're reading the fine lines and compare your previous light bill, your electricity bill, um, to whatever you're seeing on the power to choose. You'll have different options there. And based on that, you're able to pick the, the plan that best fits your needs. And um, one advice I would give is really to unplug all the electrical appliances or any other electronics that are not in use, and that'll help you cut down a little bit on your electricity bill. I like your composition notebook, um, Excel document. <laughs> I think that is a great thing because that gives, no one has an excuse now to not have a budget. <laughs> yes, I, I do both. I do my Excel, but my composition is my favorite. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda, for sharing that. And I also think the uh, the free streaming things are great right now. And I actually think that HBO released some of their shows for free. So we should all take advantage of that before that goes away. I agree. <laughs> so um, I know, too, with all of us going on um, with these finances, I th um, there is a lot of misinformation and rumors going around about the CARES Act and possibly some additional relief bills. So. Armando, do you think maybe you could share some actual factual information about that and put to rest some of these rumors that people are probably hearing a lot about? Sure. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to give context about uh, the CARES Act, and this is a straight quote from Steve Munich, the Secretary of Treasury, and I'll just quote him. He says, I think the entire package provides economic relief overall for about 10 weeks. Hopefully we can kill this virus quicker and we won't need it but we have liquidity to put into the American economy to support American workers and American businesses. So basically what he's saying here is, uh, this is, uh, notice he didn't say this is a stimulus. Uh, that, that's a total different thing. He said, this is economic relief. And so, um, so I'd like to, to, sh to show you what that means, those, those numbers. So if you were to compare uh, what the CARES Act is providing. So let's say for, for an adult, 
it's twelve hundred dollars. So you get that twelve hundred dollars, and uh, it's ten weeks, right? So that's seventy days. You divide twelve hundred into seventy, and you're going to get that that number seventeen dollars and fourteen cents. So for someone in Houston, uh, that's single, the minimum that you need to live off is sixty six dollars and eighty four cents. So if you look at that third that middle column right there, it's it's a daily deficit of $49.70. So let's say it's two adults and one child. Uh, the CARES Act is providing $41.28 for 10 weeks. But if you look at the living wage, just the bare minimum to survive in Houston, that is $130.08. So basically uh, what the government is doing is if you have a gunshot wound, they're offering you a Band-Aid. So it's really important uh, to save this money because we really don't know what's going on. If Obviously, if you've lost your job, uh, it's really important to have these the, the perspective of these numbers and to really budget, uh, apply for unemployment, and uh, use this money very carefully. Thank you for explaining some of that. I think there... I think putting that term of it's not necessarily the stimulus, but this relief package, you know, and it's, I know it may not, like the Band-Aid might be a little bit. So hopefully there's some other things coming or that we can all do um, maybe with a financial coach or some other stuff to push ahead during these hard times. Yes, absolutely. We also have our case management, our team, so they could definitely help us out in, in that area for those that are in, in not employed. Uh, we could definitely reach out to our team members. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. Um, if you are struggling to meet your basic needs, um, if you can't pay your electric bill or your mortgage or rent and um, that relief bill, um, like Armando just pointed out, you know, isn't really able to help um, with, a you know, a lot. It helps some. Um, our case managers might be able to um, help you and connect you with some resources. So definitely reach out. So thank you, Armando, for that. And as we were just kind of touching on that, you know, unemployment is at an all time high right now. So, Brenda, people may not think that this is a time to talk to a financial coach. So is this still a time, even if they are unemployed, where they should be talking with you guys and working with a financial coach? Um, and if it is, um, what can you guys help them with? Yes. Um, thank you, Shelley. Yes, this is definitely a time to really be talking to a financial coach because you probably have a lot of financial stress, right? And you probably can't, um, you know, stress definitely is shown to block your mind and you really can't think straight. So it really helps to have some input and talk to a financial coach. I always say two minds work better than one. So if you have somebody helping you and guiding you and going through your options, that's really beneficial. So some ways that um, a financial coach can help is really by asking open-ended questions that lead, for the, um, lead the client to project their future financial goals. Um, and we do this by helping the client define their goals. And also, this also helps um, the client create a plan that's going to align with their financial goals. And they can only do this if they talk to a financial coach that it's going to help through this time and really alleviate some of that financial stress. Um, also, another way that a financial coach can help is by providing financial education and um, also talking about what money obstacles is, um, the client is facing. And, um, you know, and like Armando said earlier, credit can impact your employment. So we can definitely talk about improving credits and also steps to take to take care of your credit, especially now that you're not employed, really helping you gain the skills and the knowledge so you can talk to your creditors and find a way to be able to have your creditors work with you during this time. Another way that um, I help, we can help clients is really by creating this in an income that it's gonna reveal how much money does this person need um, to cover their expenses. And, um, not, and right now it would be just basic needs, right? So we would create a plan that would be plan A. Plan A is gonna eventually take them to plan B. And plan B is where they see themselves, where their desired lifestyle is at. So we're gonna create that plan and walk them through so they can reach their final goal. And um, we also, a financial co um, coach can help provide the tools and resources the client needs. And um, of course, that's the educational part. Um, also, we can talk about um, adding skill sets and provide resources like Capital Idea. 
um, they help students that are currently um, unemployed and um, they're seeking to add a skill set and learn a new skill so they can be, um, be productive and earn income. Also, um, Buckner is another resource for single parents that are looking to improve their lives and add skill sets as well. Also, a financial coach will refer you out to a, um, an employment coach that can help you with your resume, soft skills. Um, they can also help you and get you prepared for that interview. And also, um, if a client's not able to meet their basic needs, then a, um, a financial coach will refer them to the um, case manager and they will be able to help them to meet those basic needs like food and health insurance and you know, other needs. I think that's another really good point that you and Armando have now brought up that one of the really great things about Family Houston is that we can refer you within um, our organization to these other resources. You know, we've got our case management program to help you meet those basic needs, to get your electric bills paid, to get food on the table. And then we can refer you over to Brenda and Armando and our other great financial coaches and start working on a plan um, to get you, you know, ahead of it and making a budget and get, reaching these goals. And then, you know, obviously, um, you know, when there's stress with money or you're not able to meet these basic needs, there's a lot of anxiety, uh, frustrations, and I'm, we can refer you over to our mental health counselors. So I think that's a great point that we really can help you with a lot of these things and connect you full circle, um, all under the same roof or right now remotely under the same roof. Thank you, Shirley, so, for mentioning that because that mental stress is definitely, um, there's a lot of it and definitely that mental health definitely a great component to our yeah, services. I'm sure we're all feeling that. Um, I'm going to keep you up here, Brenda, and I'm actually going to pull Armando up here too, because I have one last question and I'm going to give it to both of you. Um, so maybe if you guys could maybe give some uh, recommendations of any of your favorite apps or podcasts, maybe some books or Facebook pages that you guys use uh, that maybe some of our viewers could also um, in their own time go utilize. Okay. Um so, Go ahead, Armando. Yeah, um, one app that I previously mentioned, I really like Credit Karma. Uh, some people criticize Credit Karma for not being accurate. So just wanted to clarify one misconception about Credit Karma. Uh, so what basically happens is there's different FICO scoring systems. There's different algorithms. So a, a certain lender might be using, you know, point eight version while another might be using a 0.7 and even when you apply for a loan you might get two different credit scores uh, based on those algorithms uh, but one thing that i really like about credit karma it, it helps you monitor so definitely if your credit is going down no matter where you pull it you're going to see that tendency to go down if it's going up you're going to see that tendency going up so um uh, and i also uh one of my clients downloaded it and it gave him a notification that uh at a prior city where he used to live, uh, they owed him $200. So he was able to get $200 on a deposit that he left on the, on, on the water service. So it's a great app that uh, gives you all these neat notifications and I highly recommend Credit Karma. So another app that I recommend, it's Mint. And Mint is great because you can also, you not can only just see your credit score, you can also track your expenses. And um, another one is Pocket Guard. And Pocket Guard can be used um, by someone who wants to personalize your budget. And it, there's a free version and a paid version. Um, it's also available for Apple and Android devices. And it can sync pretty much with any bank. The app uses spending limits and automatically builds a personalized budget based on income, bills, and goals. You can make uh, monthly saving goals and mark bills as recurring, so you can see how much you have um, in your pocket that day, week, or month. And um, and some other resources that I like to follow are the Bajanista on Facebook, the Credenista on Facebook, a book that I really enjoyed, um, The Millionaire Next Door. It's really eye-opening. Um, it really definitely makes you see money in a different way. And it really encourages you, encourages you to start managing your money. And um, podcasts, it's We Study Billionaires and The Economist. Those are some of the podcasts that I recommend. 
Awesome. Thank you guys for sharing both of those. And um, I'm just going to bring you both up here one last time and just see uh, if you guys have anything else that you wanted to share um, or anything before we uh, sign off. Um, yes, I would like to um, share um, with people just to keep it, their eyes open um, for any scams out there. There's right now during this pandemic, there are a lot of people trying to take advantage of people by scamming them and taking really cheating them out of their own money. So if you're getting emails or calls or texts or seeing ads or offers online, um, be careful with those. Um, the government will not seek out to you via the sources. Your bank um, banking institute would not be texting you for your information. Um, most of these organizations will actually mail you any information or actually mail you that there's probably and send you a text message that somebody is trying to use your information. So they're not gonna ask you for your information. So please um, be aware of this. Um, anyone who tells you to send money during um, through Western Union MoneyGram or via a, a gift card, don't do this. They're trying to scam you. Those are really great reminders because I think too, we're all on edge right now and probably might be a little more vulnerable or susceptible to some of these scams. So it is a good reminder to just be aware and double check anything before you uh, send anything that you think might not be <laughs> um, the best thing to be sending over those sorts of uh, uh, your tablet or Insta or your messages, things like that. Armando, did you want to add anything before we sign off? Sure. I would like to uh, just encourage everyone uh, to use this service uh, for financial coaching. As it was previously mentioned, uh, it is at absolutely no cost. Um, uh, and the great thing about it now, uh, especially with all the social distancing, you don't, leave, you don't even have to leave your house. We can meet with a financial coach via Zoom. Uh, we would love to help you out, navigate, and be prepared. Uh, uh, to help you prepare for your goals and to make those wishes, those desires a reality. Perfect. Thank you both so much for joining me this evening and sharing all of this great information with our viewers out there. Um, so I hope you guys have a great night and thank you again uh, for joining me, Armando and Brenda. Thank you. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you, Armando. And thank you, Shelly. So thank you guys again for joining us tonight in our weekly Facebook Live series. And we'll be back again next Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time right here on Facebook. And next week, we're actually going to be talking about essential workers and their families and the effect it's having on them. So I definitely hope you guys can tune in. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Thank you.